أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم Today inshallah we'll touch upon uh, some of the themes from uh, chapter 20 uh, Surah Taha Now again um, the, the themes that we're mentioning are one of many themes I mean the Quran is infinite Nobody can ever make a claim that whatever we're presenting is the final, you know, the final theme. The Quran has many themes and it's very deep. It's endless. So what we're trying to do with, with this program is trying to get, you know, some understanding of the overarching theme that the verses kind of talk about. So when we read the, the Quran, we can understand that, yes, these, all these verses serve that theme. Now, the, uh, in, in Surah Taha, the main theme of the surah is clearly stated from the beginning. Taha ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'an li tashqa illa tadhkiratan li man yakhsha. Taha, these are the two letters. We have not sent down to you the Qur'an that you be distressed, but only as a reminder for those who fear Allah. So this is, Allah is telling us, his reason for revealing the Qur'an is not to put believers in distress. You know, his prophet, I and mean, the prophet وسلم, is the one addressed, but all of us are addressed. That means that the, the Qur'an is not meant to be a source of distress. And that's what, you know, you know some people that are weak in faith, they think that if they ever become more deeply attached to the faith, they're going to lose out on something. They're going to be deprived of something. They're going to be miserable. They're not going to be any more fun in this life. They're going to be, you know, they have all kinds of, you know, wrong attitudes towards the Qur'an. And Allah is saying, مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى the, the, the whole purpose of revealing the Qur'an is not so that, you know, you'd be distressed. And it's only a reminder for those who fear Allah. Now Allah Taala wants us to live a happy life. He is the creator and he is the designer of, of our life. So he is telling us, if you want to not be distressed, if you want a happy life, I'm going to give you your curriculum, your, your way of life. And that's what Islam and that's what Quran is meant to be. It's meant to be a source of happiness and to keep us away from, from, from problems and there'll be no distress. Now, this does not mean that a believer will not have difficulties. And that's what the surah also talks about when it's talk about the, the story of uh, Sayyidina Musa. It's a very long story. The, the Sayyidina Musa was mentioned in 17 different you know, surahs, and this is the longest one that, that goes through his birth and you know, through all its you know, different stages of his life. And it's telling us that just because you're a Muslim, you're a believer, that everything is going to be, you know, smooth sailing in this life. No. There will be difficulties, but there's no distress. There's no shaqa. Shaqa is misery. Misery where you're just, no matter what you have, you're just miserable. It's intense, you know, unhappiness. You may be tested. I mean, a believer is tested. You may not have, you know, wealth. You may have some difficulties. But on the inside, you know that Allah, Taala, His reward is waiting for you in the hereafter. It may be temporary. But Allah is saying, no, I will take care of you in this life and in the hereafter if you follow my directions. And that's the, the, the theme from, from Surah Taha. That when you follow the Quran... There'll be difficulties, but there'll never be distress. And if you don't, then disasters await you in this life and in the next. So the, uh, the first story was the story of, um, before we get to that, um, the source of, of the Qur'an is Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Tanzeelan mimman khalaq al-arda wa samawati al-ula al-rahmanu ala al-arsh istawa. That's where that message is coming from. It's coming from, it's a revelation from he who created the earth and the highest heavens, the most merciful who is above the throne established. Now, Allah could have chose any name 
to mention here, but he chose the name Ar-Rahman. And that's to show us that he is merciful with us. Mercy is, is, is the predominant attribute that Allah Taala deals with us. You know, he's merciful to, to everyone, to everything in creation. So, and this, you know, Quran is coming from the most merciful, so he would have mercy on us in this life and in the hereafter. So how can anyone think that this faith is meant to cause distress or cause difficulties or cause hardships? And, and if you think about it, Islam does not, does not prevent you from enjoying life. It just directs you to the right channels of enjoying life. You know, Allah put desires in us. Men love women. Fine, I'm not going to deprive you from women, but I'm going to give you a channel which is called marriage. That's the only channels channel allowed to you. You have 180 degrees, I'm going to give you a slice of it. If you stay in that range, you're okay. There is no deprivation. Islam does not have deprivation. We can do anything, but according, you know, Allah gave us specific channels for our safety. And I mentioned that before, when you, when you see a, a door called high voltage, that high voltage is not meant to restrict your freedom. It's meant to, to, to ensure your safety. You want to cross that and go in and get electrocuted? It's up to you. But Allah, you know, when he tells us, don't do this, it's for our own, our own good. Not to cause hardship and distress and shaqa. It's for our protection. When we go against it, that's when shaqa begins. So if we look at the, at the verses, it, it talks about um, the story of, uh, of Sayyidina Musa. And it's a very long, I mean, it, most of the, the surah is about Sayyidina Musa. And it shows the many difficulties and the mercies that Allah also during those difficulties, there was also mercies from Allah. In verse 24, Allah is uh, telling uh, Prophet Musa, alayhi salam, اذهب إلى فرعون إنه طغى. Go to Pharaoh, indeed he has trans transgressed. Now Pharaoh is somebody who claimed to be God and he is ruthless. So Sayyidina Musa, it's a very difficult task. You're going to this tyrant and you're going to call him to Allah. That's a very difficult task. But Allah Taala reminded Sayyidina Musa of his of his uh, favors on him in verse thirty-seven to thirty-nine. وَلَقَدْ مَنَنَّا عَلَيْكَ مَرَّةً أُخْرَى We 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 had we have already conferred favor upon you. So we because when Allah, Allah when uh, Prophet uh, uh, Musa was asking for help and for his brother to be you know to be sent as a messenger with him. Allah says, yes, قد, you know, I will grant you that. But Allah reminded him of his mercy when he was a baby. When, when he was a baby and how he, he uh, you know, gave, inspired his mother to put him in the, you know, in the box. And the box took him, you know, through the river. And the river led him right to the house of, of the tyrant who was killing all the, ch all the children of, you know, of Bani Israel. Who, who controls the universe? Who controls the waves? Who controls the hearts of people? Allah Tabarak wa Taala. It's like don't don't worry, don't worry. My mercy and you know, you know, I am with you. My mercy is you know is with you, and He gave him this mercy without him asking. So now when Musa is is asking for help, he's, and Allah is not going to give it to him. Of course, you know Allah is 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 with the believers. So even in, in distressful situations, Allah is reminding Sayyidina Musa, And I bestowed upon you love from me, and you would be brought up under my eye, under Allah's supervision. Everything is under Allah's supervision. When Allah wants to take care of you, He makes your enemies serve you. Just like they, you know, Pharaoh was trying to kill the children of, you know, because he saw in a dream that one of the children of, of Israel were, you know, would, would, would kill him. So what did Allah make him do? He made him raise the person who was going to kill him in his own house. And he had to pay his mother to breastfeed him. Allahu Akbar. I mean, how, how, how if, if, if you look at the story of the life of Prophet Musa, you see the mercy and the power and the disposal of all affairs 
you know, by Almighty. So the so happiness comes from the inside. Pleasure comes from the outside. When you eat something nice, that's called pleasure. It's not called happiness. Because once it's done, then the feeling goes away. Happiness comes from the inside. You're happy even if you are the poorest person on earth. You have happiness that, that you, you can fly. That's how happiness. And the source of that happiness is Allah. Allah is the only one who gives you that happiness. And when you get away from Allah, that happiness goes away and now you're miserable. That's where the shaqa comes from, from being away from Allah. So Allah, tabaraka ta'ala, you know, he puts his, the mercy and the, the happiness in our life when we follow them. Now, the magicians believed, you know, the, the story of the magicians when uh, Sayyidina Musa was confronting them. And they saw the great miracle and they, you know, they proclaimed to, to believe in Allah and uh, and that made Pharaoh angry. He said, How dare you? How dare you believe in Moses and, and, his, and his God before I allow you to? And, you know, that's... And they, he threatened them to, to you know, to, to basically execute them in the worst manner, to cut their hands and feet from opposite directions and crucify them, you know, and what did they say when they saw the haq, when they saw the truth? They say, They said, Do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. We believe. We believe if whatever you do to us, you only do it in this life. We want to secure the happiness, the eternal happiness. And that comes, that comes from Allah. So the, this situation was, was very stressful because the magicians were killed on that day. But, you know, the magicians died. Sayyidina Musa died eventually and Pharaoh died eventually. Everyone dies. But where, what, where do they go after that? The magicians are happy in heaven. Sayyidina Musa is happy in heaven. And Pharaoh is, is in the grave being displayed. The hell, hellfire is being displayed to him every day until the day of judgment. And then he'll, be, he'll lead his people into, into hellfire. Who's, who's happy? Who's miserable? Who's happy and who's miserable? And that's what Allah wants to tell us in this story. That your closeness to Allah is where happiness is. If you get away from Allah, that's where misery starts. And, and Allah ta'ala mentions in the, in the verses, um, So the, these are verses that, you know, to, on, the, on the tongue of the, of, the, uh, of the magicians. They said, indeed, whoever comes to his Lord as a criminal, indeed for him is hell. He, he will neither die therein nor live. But whoever comes to him as a believer having done righteous deeds, for those will be the highest degree in position. Gardens of perpetual residence beneath which uh, rivers flow, wherein they abide eternally, and that is the reward for the ones who purify themselves. So this is the rahmah from Allah that you may have difficulties in this life. You may the pri pay the price for your belief in Allah and for standing with the truth and fighting for the truth. But happiness is, is, awaits, awaits a believer. And misery awaits the non-believers. So that's, you know, that's the, the, the contrast between hap happiness and misery. And... Um, Misery awaits the ones who reject the faith. So there are verses, And uh, thus, O Muhammad, we relate, we relate to you from the news of what has preceded. And we have certainly given you from us the Quran. Whoever turns away from it, from this Quran, then indeed he will bear on the day of resurrection a burden. 
abiding eternally therein, and evil it is for them on the day of resurrection as a load. So misery is waiting for the people who, refu- who reject this Quran and fight it. And misery awaits the unjust. In verse 111, and all faces will be humbled on the day of judgment before the ever living, the sustainer of existence, and he, he will have failed who carried injustice. So, when I, and uh, oppression and justice will be a great cause of misery in the hereafter. And the opposite is stated. But those, but he who does righteous deeds while he is a believer, he will neither fear injustice nor deprivation. So, you know, happiness awaits the believer when unhappiness awaits the non-believer. So, and the third example is the genuine happiness comes from the closeness to Allah and his obedience. And the story of Adam and how he was, you know, he was tempted by Iblis and how he was cast from heaven is mentioned in the surah also from um, verse 117. So the, the word tashqa, shaqa, you know, the misery keeps repeating in this, in this verse, in this uh, surah. So it, it's one of the common themes. We said, so we said, O Adam, indeed, Iblis is an enemy to you and to your wife. Then let him not remove you from paradise so you would suffer. Because when you get away from Allah and his garden and his nearness to Allah, then you'll be miserable. So Allah is warning him, don't let him tempt you. So, and in verse 123, but Adam, you know, was, was tempted by Iblis, and we know the story, and Allah says, get out. Get out from, you know, from, uh, and that's where our, as mankind, that's where our misery starts. We were in the nearness to Allah in his, in his Jannah, and then we were cast down to this earth to strive and, and have difficulties for a while. And inshallah, we'll, we'll get back to that bliss and the nearness to Allah if we obey him. So Allah says, descend from paradise, all of you, all of all, all, being enemies to one another. And if there should come to you guidance from me, then whoever follows my guidance will neither go, n- neither go astray nor suffer. Now Allah is giving us a rule here, a qanun. A divine law. If you follow the guidance of Allah, your mind will and yourself will never get lost. Will you'll never lose your way, and you will never be miserable in the hereafter. So, if you want to be guided and happy in this life and in the next, you have to follow the Huda of Allah. And the opposite. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً دَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى That's also a law. The opposite. Whoever turns away from my remembrance, indeed he will have a depressed life, and we will gather him on the day of resurrection blind. And we see that. We see that. There are a lot of people that have a lot of money. They have a lot of wealth. They have of everything, but they don't have iman, and they are miserable. They're miserable on the inside. And how do we know that? They kill themselves. They get bored. This life is not meant to keep us engaged. You know, you may strive to have a Lamborghini. Once you have a Lamborghini, after about a month, you're tired. You're you're bored with it. That's how it is. The only thing we'll never be bored is the closeness to Allah, knowing Allah, you know, following, you know, studying his Quran. This is infinite. And the nafs al-bashariya, you know, the, you know, that loves the infinite, it's drawn to the infinite, will never, will never be bored, will never, you know, feel like, you know, we're, we're distressed. So we have, you know, we have to follow these rules. Now, rida, satisfaction, is, is, is kind of mentioned in here. And the laws on how to be satisfied with your life is, is given in some of these verses. 
So rida is, is like the height of happiness. When you're so content, you don't need anything. You have everything, even though you're poor. You feel like you have everything. You don't need anything else. That's what rida is. You're content with what, whatever Allah gave you. Now, how we can accomplish this? Verse 130. فاصبر على ما يقولون وسبح بحمد ربك قبل طلوع الشمس وقبل غروبها ومن آناء الليل فسبح وأطراف النهار لعلك ترضى. So you have to be patient. You have to be patient with حق. Because the, the road that Allah gave us requires patience. There's difficulties. It requires patience. And then the rest of the verse is talking about التسبيح uh, of Allah in different times. Those are the times of the prayers. You know, before طلوع الشمس that Fajr. بعد غروبها is, you know, so you're talking about Fajr, Isha, and, and, and all of the, the, the five prayer times are mentioned in this verse. That sabr and salah are your first tool. And then the second tool, um, second tool, وَلَا تَمُدَّنَّ عَيْنَيْكَ إِلَى مَا مَتَّعْنَا بِهِ أَزْوَاجًا مِنْهُمْ زَهْرَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا لِنَفْتِنَهُمْ فِيهِ وَرِزْقُ رَبِّكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى and the second one is be content with what Allah gave you and don't look at what Allah gave others because it's a test. Allah tests everyone. He may test you with poverty just like he would test somebody else with, with extreme you know, wealthiness. It's all tests. So you, you know, if, if, you're, if you're poor, your test, you pass the test by being patient. If you're... Rich, you pass the test by spending it in the way Allah told you to spend it. So it, life is all a test. And if you notice, Allah says, Zahrat al hayat al dunya, the flower, the petal of, of hayat al dunya. What's the property of a flower? The flower will wilt and die shortly. You're not going to have a rose that stays beautiful indefinitely. A week, two weeks. Eventually, it will wilt and die. And that's how the beauty of this life is and everything that's in it. It may be beautiful for a while, but it eventually will wilt. What remains and what stays beautiful is the hereafter. And that's what we need to strive for and not be, you know, Ya Allah, why did, why did you give this person three houses and I can't even, you know, I'm barely renting a house. Don't look, don't look at other people and what Allah gave them because they're all a test. Focus on yourself and what Allah gave you. Be content and then pass your own test. And then the other thing in 132 is And pay attention to prayer and, and order your family, your kids, your, your wife, you know, make sure that they pray and stay on them until it takes hold, that habit takes hold. And, you know, because that's, you want your, 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 your children and your family to follow on your footsteps as, as a believer. And, and salat is very important. And Allah Taala will take care of providing because none of us provide. Don't think that you just because you go and have a job that you're providing for the family. Allah is the one providing you with the knowledge to work so Allah would provide for the family through you. All the provision is coming from Allah and not from any one of us. So we, we do our part and Allah Taala is the razzaq. So Allah Taala will take care of providing for the ones who provide for strive in his sake. So no matter how this world turns, you know, there's ups and downs in, in life. No matter how things go, if we stay on, on the proper course on Allah, you know, and stay close to Allah, al-aqibatu lit-taqwa. Al-aqibat, the, the end, the, the happy ending is for the believer. And happiness is in the closeness to Allah. And misery and shaqa is in the being away from Allah and His disobedience. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'na wa anfa'na bima allamtana wa zidna ilma wa arina al-haqqa haqqan wa arzuqna attiba'a wa arina al-batila batilan wa arzuqna ishtinaba wa jahalna min man yastami'una al-qawla fa yattabi'una ahsana wa adkhilna bi rahmatika fi ibadika al-salihin Subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha 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 ilaha